kids, can you help me out? I can't figure this out and I'm getting so frustrated. <sighs> okay, thank you Jesus for your joy. I know this is going to work out. Wait, what's that? Oh, of course I have to turn it on. <laughs> now my mom said I should use these headphones so I can listen to Calvary Kids online, but I can't figure out where it's supposed to go. Oh, where? Oh, thank you. Now, what about this? What is this for? It's a what? A mouse? What a silly name. It doesn't look like a mouse. It can't eat cheese. <laughs> okay, I think I might be ready. Are you ready? Because it's time for worship. <laughs>
What's up, party people? Welcome to our failed or nailed video challenge. In just a second, we're going to play a few clips for you, and it's going to freeze right before we see if things went according to plan or not so much. Get ready to guess, because here we go. Life has been different lately. Maybe you haven't been able to play with your friends, go on that special family vacation, hug your family when they come to visit, and maybe you've even lost your joy. You might feel like you've been trying so hard to be happy and nothing is working, which means you may have even given up trying. You're not the only one feeling this way right now, and it's okay, because joy is always within reach. Hey Calvary kids, I don't know about you, but I am loving these videos. I can never tell when someone's gonna wipe out or not. I'm on the edge of my seat waiting to see what happens. Today is part two of our brand new series called Gospel Fueled Joy. I am so excited that you're going on this journey through Philippians with us. Being full of joy is always within reach. As we continue this series, Gospel Fueled Joy, we're going to realize just how full of joy we already are. Last week, we shared four ideas about joy and happiness and realized that we can experience true happiness when we learn how to access the full joy that is Jesus living on the inside of us. Today, we're going to find four big choices that Paul makes to bring happiness in his life through the joy of Jesus. The first one is this. Be grateful for people in your life. Gratefulness or being thankful naturally leads to happiness. With Jesus' help, you can choose to be grateful for the people that are in your life. In verse three, Paul says, every time I think of you, I give thanks to God. Let's not forget that Paul is locked in a prison in Rome and is writing this letter to the church in Philippi. And the people in the church of Philippi haven't always been that nice to him. I think of them kind of like my brothers and sisters. Sometimes we get into fights and we'd be angry at one another, but other times we would play together and have the best time in the world. When Paul wrote this letter, he was really saying, I choose to remember the good things about you and the fun that we have had. Let's take a moment and remember something fun that you've done with a brother or sister or a close friend. When you choose to remember a time that you enjoyed, it's easier to be grateful for people in your life. Especially with everyone being quarantined and locked in the house together all this time, you just spent all this time thinking about how much you want to get away from the people in your house. Take time today to remember the good things about the people that you've spent the most time with in your life. Let's see what the next choice that Paul makes is. Paul says to pray with joy for the people in your life. Have you ever had someone pray with you? Praying with people about what's going on in my life always encouraged me and helps me to remember what's truly and really important. In verse four, Paul says, in all my prayers for all of you, I always pray with joy. 
for just a second, I want you to think about someone that drives you crazy. I mean, up the wall. And if they're in the room with you right now, don't point at them. Oops. Now ask yourself this question. Do you pray for them? And when you do, if you do, do you complain to God and ask him to change him or her? Or do I thank God for them being in my life and actually mean it? If you find it challenging to pray joyfully for this person, just pray what Paul prayed in verses 9 through 11 of Philippians chapter 1 and watch what God does in your relationship with them. Be grateful for people, pray for people, and with joy. And you know what? The third choice that Paul made to really experience joy is to believe the best about the people in your life. After the first week staying at home with your family and not really going anywhere, I'm sure you started to notice some things that just weren't the best about them. And the longer that you see someone in that terrible worst place, it gets harder to not think that they're like that all of the time. So how do we believe the best in people even when we've seen them at their worst? Paul says in verse six, there's never been the slightest doubt in my mind that the God who started this great work in you would keep at it and bring it to a flourishing finish on the very day Christ Jesus appears. Once you truly experience God's love and allow him to love other people through you, you'll see people through God's eyes. And you know what, young person? Then you'll be able to believe the best about the people that you see. Remember, it's not your job to change people, it's God's. So let God love people through you and start to make a difference in their lives. So Paul's taught us how to be grateful, how to pray with joy, and how to believe the best about people. Now lastly, with Jesus's help, we can choose to love people like Jesus does. Paul shares in verse eight, God knows how much I love and miss you these days. Sometimes I think I feel as strongly about you as Christ does. When we experience grace, we realize how great grace is. And grace is so great that it can do everything for you, even when you feel like you can't. When you feel like you can't love someone or you can't be grateful, can't pray for them joyfully, or can't believe the best in someone, grace can and grace will. All you have to do to allow grace to do all of these things is simply trust in God. Grace is the person of Jesus. And when you let him live through you, being full of joy comes naturally. It's not something you have to work for, but just trust in him and he will help draw it out of you. Paul was making an impact on us, even in one of the worst times in his life. What would have happened if Paul had let his situation prevent him from sharing the good news to the church in Philippi? I am so glad that he didn't. And now 2000 years later, we can learn from what Paul shared. Let's pray. Thank you, Jesus, that your grace can do all things and that you empower me to love people in my life by sharing your love with people. Thank you for loving me first so that I wouldn't know what love is. In Jesus name, Amen. Hey, boys and girls, we're here, and this is week two of our Boys versus Girls Challenge in the Game Zone. Are you excited? I'm excited. Are the girls going to lose today? No, we're going to win today, okay? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> this is going to be a close one. I believe in the boys. They need a win. The girls are up one nothing. Yes. And this week, we're doing the Ping Pong Challenge. So what they've got to do is they've got to take the ping pong ball from the far end and they've got to bounce it back and forth using their paddles and they've got to drop it in these baskets right here. So each each ping pong ball that goes into these baskets is going to give them a point. The team with the most points at the end of our time is going to win. Yes, which is going to be the girls. It's going to be the boys. <laughs> I don't know. All right. Are you all ready? Let's yes. do this thing. All right, let's do it. All right, teams, are you ready? Your time begins in three, two, one, go! Let's go, ladies. Oh, come on, right. Roman. Roman and Brandon right. got a nice Let's little flow. Okay, they're going back. They're going back. The ladies are going back. Oh, 
Now they do get up to two hits every time with their paddle. Don't two forget hits. that. Okay. I think they the boys are. Oh, the boys are having a challenge. Come on, guys. We need a win. The girls won last week. It's our turn. You know, concentration. Look at the ladies. Oh, the ladies do have a lot of concentration. Look at that. Oh, oh, just short. Just short. I feel like short. we need to count that. I don't know. We just might. If they might don't get to. any points, that might be the closest shot. Maybe we say the person could get a ping pong ball exactly, closest to the basket. Know? Just like that. All right, Roman and Brandon, we believe in you. Come we believe on, guys. in you. You work hard together every week for Calvary Kids. Oh, that oh, was God. three. I'm going to have to keep the ladies. Oh, wow. The guys oh, got the one guys in. Got one in. Come okay, on. ladies, let's get it. That's what I'm talking about, boys. One nothing. It's okay. one nothing. And time is getting close. Oh, We've got about 30 nothing. seconds left. The boys have two. Oh, girls, y'all just got to get it there All and right, create ladies. a backboard. Create a backboard to drop that in. Okay, Andrena? Here we go. Let's see. Oh, <laughs> she's like, I'm just going to stand here because I know we aren't going to get it anywhere. You got to have that We're confidence. Never giving it. Here we go, ladies. There you go. Two. Good job. Come on. Oh, oh, Good so job. close. All right, here we go. We've got 10 seconds. 10, seconds 10 nine. nine. This buzzer beater, the ladies pool. I don't know what that is. Apparently, it's, it's like magic. 16 it's to 2. No, the boys won this the challenge. Won. Congratulations, job, gentlemen. That's how you Good do it. Job. We love you guys, and we'll see you next week. Next week.